so you guys can see. So it looks like my turbo's blown. Of course, like I said, this is an eBay GT35X. Looks like I'm gonna be in the market for a precision or an actual Garrett because I'm tired of playing around with this eBay stuff. All right, so what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna do a quick update or follow up on my last video about the Galant where I showed you guys where I blew my turbo. So fortunately, um, after I calmed down, I did reach back out to the company, which is Power Max Turbos on eBay. Let them know that, hey, this turbo blew too. Is there anything that you can do for me? Um, again, the customer service has been great so far. Um, I talked to the same lady I have been talking to. Uh, she was real nice. And of course, all she asked me to do was to send her a video of the turbo with the shaft play. Uh, once I did that, they got another one out to me. And in about a week or so, I had a new turbo at home ready to be unboxed so that's what i'm gonna show you guys now um and they actually didn't ask me to send back the old one either which is fortunate for us because now we can take it apart and try to really figure out what's going on and why i've had two turbos now below um in a short period of time all right guys so this is my new uh replacement turbo again i got it from the ebay seller power max turbos of course uh like i said the other one didn't last but you know 50 or so miles so we'll see if that's something that i did wrong or whether it's just a defective turbo. So I will be taking that off and taking it apart to show you guys. But for now, um, show you guys the part number because there were some comments on certain sellers having better turbos. Now I know that the sellers on eBay do not actually manufacture these turbos uh, for the most part, that they just buy them and resell them. So if you have one, you can check the number on the box. I'm not even sure if this corresponds to anything, but see if it's similar. Of course, it is made in China. But we're gonna go ahead and get this thing open to show you guys what we have. Of course, I've already done this once because the one on the car was a replacement, which leads me to believe it may not be, it may not be a problem with the turbo itself. But fortunately, the customer service from Power Max has been really good. Um, they got me a replacement turbo after just sending the video of what happened to the old one. And they got this one shipped out to me fairly quick. It only took a couple days. All right, so you see. Um, so this is just foam padding. And of course the turbo is here in the middle. All right, now this doesn't include the exhaust housing. Uh, they don't replace that for you because there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a cast iron piece. But they do give you a decent uh, turbo gasket. It is an MLS gasket. It's three layers of steel um, and some new gaskets for your drain so we're just going to save those and that's going to all that's going to be everything that's inside of this box we can just set that off and look at our turbo here all right so here we go uh, like i said does not include the exhaust housing but they do have it wrapped up in nice bubble wrap of course it is the billet wheel turbo and it looks like the exact same one that i have on the car currently and you can see it definitely looks really nice. Um, like if you look at it, there's nothing about it that immediately shouts really poor quality. Let me just lift this off. There we go. So you got these plugs just for your oil. And this can this turbo can also be water cooled, which I won't be doing. So you can just leave those ports open. You just need the top and the bottom one. The top will be for your feed. The bottom, of course, is for your drain. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Now you really don't want to spend this thing too much when it's dry and it's fresh out of the package because you don't want to mess up anything. But it does have a little bit of oil in it from the factory. Like right, so, this turbo is supposed to be a ball bearing turbo. Um, I don't believe that is the case. Uh, it's supposed to be billet wheel ball bearing to mimic the the GTX version of the Garrett turbo. Now, of course, they sell this turbo for five hundred bucks. So if you can imagine, if they sell it for that price, how much they're paying for it. Um, and of course, Garrett turbos are, you know, four times as much. Like, so we're going to go ahead and get the other one off and then take it apart. And then we'll really be able to see the internals of it. So give us somewhat of a unique view at, you know, an eBay turbo. Let's go ahead and say remove these. Uh, most of these bolts are 13 millimeters. It is kind of a tight spot to get to. All right, guys, so we got the center housing out. Uh, first thing I noticed is when I took it out, or as I was taking it out, that we have this white, uh, I guess, powder to dry it onto the surface of the center, uh, the center cartridge here. But real quick, we just look at the compressor housings. We can see uh, the, you know, they are the same. Now, the one on the left 
is the finish that it comes in, and then the one on the right, I actually painted this, I uh, painted it silver. I painted it just because the paint will be a little bit easier to clean in the future, whereas this, uh, this one here, because it's so coarse, when dirt gets down in it, it'll be harder to clean what is in the engine bay. So that's why I painted it silver. But like I said earlier, they are the same compressor housing, so I'm just gonna set this one over here and then swap that one onto the, the new turbo over here. But now we gotta get this thing apart. All right, so I got it um, loose. This contraption I had to use just to mount it to get the wheel off. Um, this nut on this end is a 10 millimeter 12 point nut. It is left hand threaded. And I believe this should come right off. It's our billet wheel. It actually looks pretty good. Now I think this should, okay, yeah. So it's not it's not actually pressed in. It actually will pull right out. Failure must have taken place inside of here. Now the only problem is, and I actually forgot about this, is that these are held in with the snap ring, which is right there if you guys can make that out. And I don't have, you can see the snap ring there, and I don't have snap ring pliers. I have gone this far and collected all these tools and not have and not picked up a set of snap ring pliers. Um, I don't know, but we're gonna see if I can get this off. Like so, with the help of my grinder, I converted this cheap old pair of 90 degree pliers, needing those pliers I had, to some snap ring pliers. So you can see what I did to just grind off the tips a little bit until they will fit into the hole. Until these holes here, you just need to squeeze those together, and the center section comes off. Um, you can also notice I did drop it on the floor. But it's no big deal. All right, so I have learned a couple things. One, I really need to invest in a set of snap ring pliers. But two, I was able to get these smaller ring out using a smaller set of needle nose pliers. All right, guys, so I got the center section out. Um, all you need to do really is flip it over and then tap the back of it with the mallet. But I did drop it, and it's a good thing I didn't plan on using this again because you can see there I end up breaking it. So, of course, that's no big deal, but it's something to keep in mind if you're doing this. Now, Right off the bat, if you're familiar with the internals of a turbo, you notice this turbo is listed as a ball bearing turbo. And why that's important is because with a ball bearing turbo, you have to run a restrictor on your feed line to limit the amount of oil that actually gets into it because you can actually damage the internals of it by putting too much oil in it. Whereas with a journal bearing, you don't need it. Um, and you can actually starve the turbo with oil if it doesn't get enough flow. Well, I was running a restrictor in the feed line and I'm thinking it ended up starving the turbo for oil because this right here like Because this right here is a journal bearing like so I think the reason behind the turbo's failure What it just was not getting enough oil uh, because I didn't have a problem until after I had done several pulls like, So now that I know that I'm gonna go ahead and drill out my restrictor um, And open that fitting up a little bit so that it won't reduce oil flow from my feed line And hopefully this new turbo won't have this problem in the last long than 50 miles so while I have everything out, figure give you guys a good visual of what's inside of a turbo. Um, like I mentioned, uh, this is your journal bearing. There's actually two of these inside of the turbo. So there's another one that's actually down in there. So if this had been a ball bearing turbo, there would have been a cartridge with ball bearings in the middle of this, as opposed to these little brass pieces here. So there you go. You have a good idea of what is inside of this guy here. Like we discovered, not a true ball bearing turbo. So you don't need to run a restrictor, which I'm assuming was my problem. All right, guys, so that's all I got for you today. Um, like I said, the customer service from Power Max Turbos has been really good. Um, it's unfortunate that we had to go through two turbos and in order to find this stuff out. But like I said, I think we found out the problem, uh, being the fact that these turbos aren't actually ball bearing. They don't need a restrictor on them, so I think that's what our problem is. I've actually had the turbo installed for a little while now, and I've been pushing it pretty hard, and it has shown no signs of damage. So I think that was the issue. Of course, my cheap old turbo that I bought, um, I bought over a year ago. Um, I decided to go ahead and reach back out to see if there's anything they could do, maybe get a discount on a new turbo. Um, and they said, you know what, unfortunately, we don't actually carry that turbo. We didn't have it in stock at the moment, uh, but we can send you a new turbo, one of our billet wheel turbos, for a small fee. So I ended up paying uh, about 150 bucks to get that new turbo in. Now, of course, fast forward a couple weeks, um, the new turbo is blown. I reached back out after I calmed down a little bit and I told him, hey, this turbo blew too. Uh, then that you can do. And they end up sending me a new uh, billet wheel turbo for no cost. So I did not pay anything for that second turbo. So I said shipping was pretty quick. It came from California to Virginia, completely across the country in about a week, um, a little bit less than a week, I think. And you know, it didn't cost me anything. Right, so that's definitely a testament to their customer service. So I have nothing bad to say on that end. Right, but it's always a gamble. Uh, whether you get a used name brand product or a new cheap product, it's going to be a gamble 
um, either way. So, like, so you do want to consider that in your shopping. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.